Charles Grove, Kiki number 10. They will have the cost of all these users. They will have the cost of all these users. They will have the Craig Knutes in the White County Board. Marshall Mandel, Lake of Women Voters. Just bought in neighborhood board number, number eight, Mokwit Macaulay Moyle. You're up. Sorry. Al Center, DPP, Planning Division. Paul Miliorado from the Pacific Resource Partnership. Michelle Hartello, Pacific Resource Partnership. Janet Ivanini, Morton University. Susan Mawari, Washington Resident Association. That's to conclude a neighborhood board number three. Doug John, Office of Council Services. John Mara, APA Hawaii. Mike Murphy, DPS. <laughs> Kevin Rath, I have a neighborhood board number 23. Kirby Lackford, resident 9678. Richard Lackford, neighborhood board number 36. Well, we're going to start things off with uh, somebody named Brennan. Sorry, <laughs> 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 skipped over here. I think I've known Brennan my whole life, but anyway, Bre Brennan, you have the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you just get into it. You know? <laughs> so it's. Well, while Marion does that, um, I'm Brennan Morioka, I'm the Deputy Executive Director for HART. Um, and I'm going to, I'll give you a, a kind of an update on where we are, just some general background on the project, which I'm sure many of you are very familiar with, uh, just a status of where we are, what the plan is going forward, and then just some, <clears throat> some illustrations on our stations, some general uh, components of the stations, and how our stations are meant to kind of tie in into the context and the neighborhoods right around it. And hopefully that kind of ties into what uh, Harrison Rue is going to be talking about in terms of uh, transit-oriented development because one is really not going to work without the other. Uh, we will be very dependent on having uh, clear and easy access to our stations because without uh, reliable and, and direct access by our customers, there's really no desirability for people to take rail. <coughs> and so. The, the built environment around our stations are just as important as the rail system itself. So, uh, so just most of you guys should already know it's a 20 mile system from uh, East Kapolei, which is basically the Croc Center. Um, goes up Kualakai Parkway and North South Road, along Farrington Highway, Kamehameha Highway, and then we get into uh, the Honolulu International Airport area, and then down Dillingham and into downtown in the city center segment. So 20 miles, 21 stations. Uh, we do have four park and rides uh, at various locations, primarily on the western half. Um, these are some general illustrations of what they'll look like. Pearl Highlands, which is our primary park and ride that will accommodate all of our, our customers coming from the central, central Oahu area with a direct off-ramp from H2 directly into the parking structure and our transit center. Uh, 1600, 1,600 spaces. Aloha Stadium is another major park and ride for us. Uh, we will control the Kamehameha lot at Aloha Stadium during non-event days, so general operations for the rail, we will control the park and ride, uh, but on event days, we turn the parking lot back over to Aloha Stadium for their events. Um, East Kapolei Station will have one there, and then UH West Oahu will have uh, a temporary one on the UH West Oahu campus site, and then we have a permanent, our permanent park and ride will be uh, across the way, uh, across uh, Kualakai, the Kaloi Channel uh, drain ditch once a pedestrian overpass is built. So some, some of the uh, assumptions or projections looking out towards 2030, uh, some of the, the statistics shows that about 70% of all residents 
on Oahu will live in and around the corridor that rail will transit. Um, more than 80% of the um, employment opportunities will be along the rail corridor as well. And then uh, from the dirt over that planning, same planning horizon to 2030, there is a proc an estimated about 750,000 more daily trips that will be on our, our roadways, uh, which rail is meant to help address. Some of the operating details of, of how we'll run our daily business. We will operate from, we will start off at 4 a.m. and go to midnight on a daily basis. Obviously over time we may adjust those depending on what kind of interest and, and level of ridership we have in the early morning or late at night. Uh, we'll be running about every three to six minutes during peak hours. That'll back off to about 10 minutes during the, uh, the non-peak hour days or during the evenings. Uh, we are working very closely with OTS and DTS on a, on a fair policy system so they will have a very seamless way for you to transfer between or ride between both the bus and the rail so that there's a single fair system or like a, like a smart car that you'll be using. Um, it will be AA compliant and we will be accommodating bicycles, luggage, surfboards, uh, strollers, whatever you bring on and then because of the, the commute uh, roughly, you know, 45 miles or so, uh, 45 minutes or so, if you're going end to end, we're offering free Wi-Fi both on our platform, station platforms, and on the trains themselves. Cars are, are designed to go approximately 55 miles at maximum speed capacity, but over the course of the 20 miles, including the, the time that you, the, the dwell time at the station itself, you'll average about 30 miles an hour between over the, the course of the, the corridor. At our stations, um, and, and just our project overall, safety and security is, is, is top of mind. Uh, if people don't feel safe using the system, they didn't, then they just won't ride it. And, and we need to make sure that we maximize our ridership. So we have closed uh, circuit cameras at all stations and all over our cars. Uh, we have a few thousand cameras across the system, all of which will be monitored at our operations control center. And I'll show you an uh, illustration of that later. Um, we're working very closely with Honolulu Police Department on both response and the level of patrols that we might be able to have on our system on a roaming basis. Our stations and our parking lots are meant to, are designed to be very well lit, clear lines of sight uh, throughout our stations. As an example, our, our, uh, our elevator wells are made of glass so that people inside and outside can see what their surroundings are before they get out of the, the, the um, uh, the, the S ele uh, S elevators, I'm sorry, thank you. Uh, and then we'll have various transit personnel in and around our stations to assist our customers. Um, more than half of our $5.2 billion uh, budget has already been contracted. Um, we are in construction after a year long uh, delay. Uh, we started for the, the western 10 miles between East Kapolei Station and Al Aloha Stadium, as well as our maintenance and storage facility. So we already have 53 column foundations that have been drilled and, and completed, and then we also have installed, or Kiwit has installed 26 columns to date. Uh, we're also doing utility relocations and some additional geotechnical work, uh, both on Farrington Highway and Kamehameha Highway, as a part of the construction, as also a part of our uh, finishing the design build process. Our schedule is currently, currently has us opening up on an inter, our, what we're calling an interim opening, in the summer of 2017, we'll open that first 10 miles between East Kapolei, the Croc Center, and uh, Aloha Stadium. And then we intend to up have open to the public uh, full revenue service of the full 20 mile system uh, by 2019. And just, just so, so you also have an idea too, um, these are when we plan on opening the system to the public, but you'll actually start seeing trains run a lot in, in in and along the entire corridor uh, for those portions that we're gonna be opening for about a year in advance. So even though we're opening in summer of 2017, you're actually gonna start seeing trains run in the summer of 2016 because we have to, that's how long we need to test our entire system. Uh, and so same with the full 20 mile system, we'll test that, that eastern 10 miles starting in about uh, early 2018. So you'll, you'll see trains runs. I know it might get frustrating just seeing people no pe nobody in the trains, but it's a, it's a part of our process to make sure that we're providing a safe and, and efficient uh, system. This is a rendering of our maintenance and storage facility. Um, Leeward Community College on your left, Waipao High School on your right. This is, based, this is the old Navy drum site that DHHL just transferred over to the city. So our operations control center is there where all of our cameras, our security systems will be housed. 
um, our our storage facility, our, our maintenance facility right here where we'll, we'll clean and maintain our, our vehicles as well. This is just a sample of the Pearl Highlands uh, station and the transit center. This is the concourse level that the transit uh, center is. Also where to the, to the left is where the H2 off ramp will come. Uh, and then the parking garage is over here where the, this pedestrian ramp is. And then you can kind of see an illustration of the, what the station might look like out there. This is just a general standardized uh, rendering of, of a typical station. Canopies, platforms, uh, pedestrian bridges, and then plaza areas in and around our stations. So most of the stations will look pretty much like this. Uh, obviously in, in different communities, the, the entry areas uh, and the plaza areas are gonna look a little bit different because we do wanna make sure that it's tailored and ties into the community and con fix the context of what that neighborhood is all about. But uh, in general, we want people to understand and know um, or have some, some level of familiarity with the station, with, with each station itself. So some, some of the standard components, you have a station entryway, fare and gate modules, because right now, under the current plan, there is no fare gate system. Uh, we will be going to our board, to our heart board, uh, asking for a change order to add a fare gate system uh, the original plan was to have an honor system, uh, but most, most uh, jurisdictions that currently operate with a honor system are now transferring back and trying to implement fair gate system because those who have done it already have seen about a 30% increase in their revenue collections. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, general access is uh, escalators, elevators, uh, and stairs, and for Chad, um, one of the things, because we want to encourage uh, people to ride their bikes, so we'll, we'll have a lot of areas for uh, bike racks, as well as having a bike share program at, at, at uh, most, if not all, of our stations. Um, you know, for those who want to take the bikes up, it's kind of a, some of these staircases are pretty long and, and tall, um, so carrying a bike up is, can be often, hard, uh, often a difficult thing. <laughs> but we're going to be putting in these little, I don't know, what do you call them, Chad? like these little pl flat ramps, platforms or ramps so that people can actually push their bike up while they're walking up the stairs just to make it easier. We, and they have it on the mainland, um, it works well, and so even though it, you'd be surprised what a fight it was just to get them in. Um, pedestrian bridges to concourse levels or directly to the platforms and then tr uh, standardized platform canopies. Uh, and then the fixed guideway that goes through them. I have a question, you only got sure. one elevator. What happens when the elevator breaks or needs to be serviced? How am I going to get upstairs? Uh, we, we do have, we, we have an elevator in every station. Right. And as much as possible, we're trying to make sure that we provide a redundancy of elevators, um, especially at the, the more higher volume transit stations. Because of cost, we don't have the ability to put in two elevators at every station, but all of our stations are being designed to accommodate a future elevator well uh, when we do have some budget to add additional elevators at, at our stations. Good question, I want to follow up on that. Yes. Is the elevator going to be the half size elevator that they got at Elmar Center or is it going to be the full size elevator so that because people, able bodied yes. people with suitcases, surfboards or whatever and all you need is two wheelchairs and right. it fills the elevator. I will double check for you. I'm pretty sure they're the full size elevators because we don't have escalators at every single station. So the elevators will become a primary source of access to the upper levels. Um, so I'm, I'm almost certain that they're all the full size elevators, but I, I will double check for you. Thank you. Because because that is that is uh, a consideration. Can we please keep the question so Brendan is finished okay. through oh, yeah. this okay. whole presentation. So, and so the remainder of what I have is just kind of some renderings of what the stations will, will possibly look like. Um, some of them are, are further on in design than others. West UH, this is a sample of UH West Oahu Station, um, the, the gate entry, uh, if you can envision it, the, the campus is on this side, and so it is meant to tie in. And, and, and all of these stations, either we're, we're, we have community uh, workshops uh, for each of our station groups and we bring in all the stakeholders we, all, we invite the public we have one for our airport uh, got our airport segment station groups uh, I believe tomorrow night at Moana Lua so we welcome everybody to attend 
um, so that we can get some input and on, on some of the finer details of what this station should, should look like and accommodate. Um, but we also work directly with the adjacent landowners and stakeholders, especially like, like UH West Oahu. They have their own master plan. We want to make sure that what we're doing is going to complement and tie in as much as possible, uh, including we're building a temporary parking ride uh, in an area that they currently have planned for a, a um, development area within a parcel. Uh, <clears throat> the parking area that we're building it in is where they have designated their parking area. So we want to build the, our temporary parking ride into as much usable space that they don't have to go and, and rebuild a parking lot for themselves. So we're, we're trying, to, trying to make sure that we're, we're saving some public dollars for in, in all cases. This is another angle of the Pearl Highland Station. Uh, so you can see the, the buildings in the back. So this is looking from the Makai side, looking Malka. Um, this is the guideway. Um, the ramp, this is the transit center area. This is the level and you'll enter from that level. So all the buses are kind of like over here. This is the Pearl Ridge Station on Kamehameha Highway. Um, there's still a lot of activity on and discussions on what the, some of the surrounding area is going to be, and I don't know if Harrison is going to touch on it, but mm -hmm. there is a lot of opportunity in this area for some open space and, and, a, and a much more vibrant transit uh, turnaround area. And then this is a view of the Aloha Stadium uh, station. So the station is on the left side. And then Lagoon Drive near the airport. So just so there's some commonalities in a lot of the station components. We try to modularize them to save on money and, and economies of scale, but also we want to make sure that there are certain aspects of it that is meant to tie in a little bit better with the community. So um, this is just some ways to keep informed on what we're doing, how to contact us. Um, and so this is a photo of September 16th. The morning mm -hmm. that we went back into construction, it was a very nice morning. Mm -hmm. um, thank God it didn't rain. So, um, <laughs> very good day to, to go back into construction. So, put a lot of people back to work that day. Well, the flowers and green is nice. Yeah, well, you know, safety first, right? <laughs> so, any, any questions? Okay, questions. Uh, identify yourself and your organization and keep it one question per person, please. Because questions that won't be answered, what's going to happen? And Marion's going to get them. Give them to Brennan and then we'll respond to everybody. Okay? Please. Do you want to go? Yeah. Okay. Um, Barbara Armentrout, Three Neighborhood Board 5. This has to do with handy vans. It's, it's, uh, it's like one question, but it's a couple things because it's um, how close is the drop off from the handy van to the elevators? How far from the elevators to the train on the crossover? Because a lot of people have difficulty walking. Will ele elevators be first come, or will ADA have first priority on elevators? Because there's going to be a Good lot question. of people not going to want to go upstairs, and they're yes. all going to be in line for the elevator, and then the people in the wheelchairs are going to be in line trying to get up. So Absolutely. Well, uh, how far do they have um, to go? We, we work very closely with DTS and OTS. Um, because obviously, like I said before, without a very efficient bus service and handy van service that can, can bring our customers to uh, the rail system, it's not really gonna work for us, right? Um, so being able to have them deliver the customers and drop them off as close as possible is, is the goal on all of our stations. So uh, I, I don't know if we, it, for, for the majority of them, the, the, the locations of the bus stops and the handy van stops are, are pretty close. Um, it's just right on the sidewalk area. Uh, we do try either, either through the, the, the pullouts um, or if we can have, if we have enough room for actual turnarounds, then that's what we do. And the turnarounds and the, and the, the pullouts are typically right at the plaza areas. And the plaza areas is the direct access into our gateway entries. <clears throat> so, as much as we can, and I think we're, we've been successful for the most part, they're, they're fairly close. Um, some areas, the, and, and each station is kind of different because some, we have access to the state, to the platform areas only from one side, and some are from both sides you can access, and then we have concourse levels. So it really depends station by station on, on and where, which direction you want to go, and where you're coming from. 
uh, on how far it's going to actually take you to, to get to the platform that you want to be. So it's case by case, and we can probably sit down with you on, on the different stations if you want. Um, uh, yeah, we, we're happy to sit down with and anybody. Elevator. And then the elevators, um, you know, I mean, we're not going to have personnel there all the time. I mean, we're, we're trying to still trying to figure out what kind of level of service that we need for man personnel at the stations themselves. Um, I mean, I, I, I would hope that just plain courtesy mm -mm. kind of rules the day. I, I know that's not the, but I mean, but we can only, we can only regulate, you know, at most we might have one or two people at the station at any one time, and they're going to be responsible for the whole the platforms, the, the plaza areas, the staying. So it's, you know, it, I, they're not going to be able to kind of monitor and, and, control the just the the elevator area so at, at to some degree we are going to have to rely on people's courtesy okay linda's next can i follow up on that do you could heart consider forming a, an advisory subcommittee of disabled individuals you know organizations and whatnot because these are going to keep popping up every presentation you have yeah, you're going to have it for the for the, the mm -hmm. service animals, you're going to have it for the visually impaired, you're going to have it for the hearing impaired, you're going to have it for the mobility impaired. So if you could set up a, a formal citizen advisory committee made up of stakeholders, I mean, you know, that would that would put aside a whole lot of the questions that's going to sure. It's we, going we to keep popping up do. every single presentation sure. you have. Sure. And, I mean, and we have we have no problem sharing information. I know we share with you always the, um, yeah, but the platform you screen one on one yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah so so, so we can we can see what we can do about forming some kind of formal group. Yeah. Okay. Now, my question is: the parking is all on on West Oahu. Is there any plans, you know, for the Halekawila area or the Ala Moana area? You know, having parking there because all the parking is one side. So you assume everybody's going to do round trip from there. But what about people that work in the the pub, the PUC, and they want to work in West Oahu Queens mm -hmm. Hospital? You know, is it going to be parking? You know, yeah. on the right right side? now we do not have plans um, or designs for parking rides within the urban core. Um, but we are working with the various landowners in and around the stations, um, partly with, you know, through, through what Harrison is doing with the TOD plans uh, for the different segments and regions to see what kind of parking opportunities there are uh, near or close by the stations. Some of our stations actually do go to areas that have existing parking lots, um, which has also raised other concerns by those parking lot owners, um, like Ala Moana Shopping Center. Mm -hmm. um, you know, folks are afraid of po parking poaching and yep. stuff like that. Uh, but right now, we, we don't, it, it, not in the urban core, we don't. Um, part, part of it too is, is in, in, in looking at rail developments around the country, um, the, you know, part, of, part of what you're trying to do with, with a transit culture and, and trying to promote other alternatives, um, or modes of transportation, whether it be bus or biking or walking, whatever it is, um, or riding the rail. What they've found is is uh, providing more uh, parking, park and rides don't necessarily encourage that. Um, so it, it, it's kind of a given. It's, it's kind of a yeah. I, yeah. It's yeah. So it, it, there's pros and there's cons. So mm -hmm. we're, we're still our our job right now, and then the budget that we have is build the rail facility, and then you know try and see how we can accommodate some of these other issues that are issues that that they are concerns. But you know, right now with with the budget that we have, I mean there's already been a lot of scaling back of the project over time. I mean everybody kind of knows some of the stuff that has shrunk the project uh, from what it was originally conceived to be. So we're kind of living within the means that we have, and you know, over time, we can start addressing those and, and identifying it in priorities and tackling them one by one. So. Thank you. Sure. Andrea, the next call from the Association. I'll never see rail, but um, I just want to know the first slide you had something about nearly 70% of residents on the corridor 
how far, there's a couple of part questions. How far are they from the actual transit stations? And uh, you said 750,000 more trips by some date. By 2030. Okay, and uh, is that including Coa Ridge additions? Because I know that's uh, just, it's not zoned you know, completely yet, so it probably doesn't include that, right? Or does it include that? Or other development in heaven? Um, I'm not exactly sure what was included in the in the, the projections, um, but I think these these are these are pretty much the st the numbers that we received from DBET and uh, from DPP in, in looking at the uh, land use patterns, expectations of development over that period of time, um, DBET's numbers in terms of where the jobs are. And I'm not exactly sure what the radius, I mean, how far out from the stations <coughs> or the corridor. I believe it's anywhere from half a mile to a mile, maybe a mile, a mile away or something. Okay. Um, you said it runs up um, Dillingham. Uh, once it leaves Dillingham, what is the route it takes on its way to Alamora? So from, Dilling, it, from Dillingham, it goes past Costco, Costco. in Eagle Lake, and it shoots off to the right <laughs> by the Eco substation um, and goes to the right towards Nimitz. Uh, it stays on Nimitz or Alamoana Boulevard uh, up to Halikuila, goes down Halikuila all the way till you hit Ward. And at Ward, then it shoots over past uh, Sports Authority and Ross's to Queen Street, down Queen Street all the way down to roughly, I want to say, Pensacola. Somewhere between Pensacola and Picoy, it shoots over to Kona, and then from Kona, it goes, it just goes down to the Alamoana shopping center. Okay. Other questions? <clears throat> you mean, was that good? No. <laughs> 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 <laughs>